Hey guys, what's going on? It is uh, Friday. Friday before Christmas. Um, what's going on at the shop? Well, I'm using my iPhone here to take this video off the camera at home. But I got a couple questions I want to answer, and it's just easier to do a video. So, this is what I'm going to do for you guys. Um, I got a person who has some questions about paint and what I use. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's kind of on your preference and what's available locally. Um, I'll show you what I've got and I'll tell you the way I do it. I kind of stick with one system when I can. So it's all the same stuff. So we'll uh, go take a look at that right now. Alrighty. Now, the best thing you can do, let me get the, uh, the Bible out here. If you're going to use a particular paint system, mine being Matrix, um, get yourself a technical data reference manual. And a lot of times online, you can look at the technical data sheets for all of the products. Okay? So basically, it just has all these uh, things in it about the different products. That one happens to be the 2K PB primer, you know, um, the MP3HS primer so on and so forth. So that's a good thing to have. But as far as the uh, paint system, um, if you're doing some body work, pick whichever primer in the line that you want. This happens to be the one I'm using right now. Uh, this is MP200 direct-to-metal primer, but if it's bigger than a dollar bill or bigger than your hand, you need to etch that bare steel, okay? That's that's according to the book. So that's a product you can use. Um, but for just small filler repair areas or overall primer, you could use that primer. Uh, I don't know. I might have. Yes, I do. This one's pretty much empty. But this is another one I use, the Lightning Primer Surfacer MP4 2K. Um, this is a two coats and sand in two hours type deal. Um, I think they claim 45 minutes, but that is what it is. Um, those are a couple different primers. Then after, uh, if you're going to do an overall or a whole panel that's got body work on it, I tend to seal them up with this primer sealer. This is MP127, and uh, they also have other ones. They have a light gray and a white, I believe. Um, this one happens to be the dark gray. It's very dark charcoal, um, good for darker colors, and depending on what color you're painting will dictate the color sealer you use. Most people just use the medium gray. I use the dark gray because uh, I paint a lot of dark colors. Okay. Uh, next thing, these two things go hand in hand. This is some base coat. Uh, let's see if we can focus here. Boy, it doesn't want to focus. Nope, doesn't want to focus. This is Matrix Premium Base Coat. This is a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, you can also put activator in it, uh, which is, sorry for the all-over-the-place camera work here, but uh, this MX-57. Um, that way, if you have a screw-up, and you have to go back a day later and sand and repaint and you get into your base coat, you shouldn't have problems with it. A lot of guys don't use it at all. I use it every time now. Um, it's just a personal preference. There's the medium temperature reducer that I use in my shop in 70 degree temperature, 70 to 75. Um, that's... Uh, the mid-range one, they have a 860 and they have an 885, I believe, or an 8, yeah, 885, something like that, um, for higher temperatures. And my new favorite clear coat is this guy right here, MS78. It's a European style clear coat. Uh, it is a two to one clear, um, but it sprays like a four to one. It sprays really easy. Um, that's a normal hardener. 
uh, I don't know what they mean by normal. I consider that mid temp. It's not a slow hardener for high temperatures. If you're going to do an overall, I probably would not use the normal hardener because it will kick faster than you want it to. But that's uh, just kind of a quick rundown on some of the Matrix products I use. Now, I've used others in the past. I have some other stuff in the cabinet here. Uh, that's Montana brand, uh, which is ChemSpec. Here's Metal Lux, um, which is also ChemSpec. Uh, <clears throat> they have a plant local here to me, about 10 miles away. So uh, I was trying to buy locally for a while and try some of their stuff. It's not my favorite. The clear coats are good, but the base coat's kind of not my number one choice. But it's a great one for uh, car lot stuff for sure. So just uh, some ideas, and the price is right on this stuff. So hopefully uh, those items help you out a little bit, just give you an idea of what I use. And uh, then we're going to go outside and we're going to look at a snowplow here real quick and we're going to talk about uh, some snowplow shoes. I don't have any plow shoes, but uh, we're going to kind of give you an idea. Got my garage door fixed too. And for uh, ease of explaining this, I have this used snowplow sitting here. And you're looking at it, this, this side toward the skid steer here is the bottom. Here's the cutting edge. Um, basically, the shoe post goes up through the hole here, okay? And you stack the washers that come with them to whatever height you want your shoe to hang below the cutting edge. And then on top, um, you stack washers on it until you get to where you can put the pin through it. And there's supposed to be a hole in those. Now, I don't have any shoes laying around, but basically that's how it works. So washers on top and bottom. Washers on top won't let it drop any farther down, and the washers on bottom won't let it shove it up in any farther. And then it's just got a quick clevis pin on it. Now we'll go back in the shop, and I'll show you what I mean by a clevis. was almost holding my phone up there so you guys could watch me punch in my garage door code. Alright, I got the heat going in here. I got a couple of sloppy runs of duck there that I got to finish, but they were out of pipe at uh, the old Home Depot, so that's where I had to stop. Um, 60 degrees. Started out at 40. Um, this is a clevis, or a linchpin, snap pin, whatever, and this would go through the hole in that plow shoe. I wish I had some laying around, but I normally put them in the scrap bin. I never use them. Um, I had 15 or 20 of them laying around from over the years, but this just locks the shoe into where it needs to go. So hope that helps you out. Um, if you have more questions about it, I'll draw you a little sketch or something like that, but basically I think you can make the ones you have work. You just have to weld a little piece of pipe onto it so it can uh, come farther down through. I think those were either the wrong ones or the post wasn't long enough uh, for that particular one because usually the post is a set length and the bottom shoe runner is what wears off. So I don't know why they did it that way, but you know, as the cutting edge wears on the plow too, if, you're ta if they ever got taken off, then all of a sudden that changes, or if they put a new cutting edge on, then that distance would change. So, all right, guys, hope you enjoyed uh, that quick little snippet, and uh, we'll catch you later. See ya.